For days, search parties have scoured Zenith, Missouri. Anything in there? Clean. Clean. Checking drainage ditches, wooden lots, and brush. Maybe a body stuffed up in the culvert, or a bicycle, or any kind of evidence we can find. Any signs of three-year-old Brianne Rodriguez. Now police say they may have something. Well, we found some items of interest. I will release they are training wheels off of a bicycle, similar to the training wheels that was on the, the bicycle that was stolen. Police say the training wheels they found look just like these. Well, they can't be sure they're off the bike they're looking for, they say at least it's a start. The training wheels were found about two and a half miles southeast of Zenith, but there's potential someone just threw them out coincidentally. If somebody can come and say, hey, I threw those out there, you know, to keep my child from, you know, using the bike or something, that would help so much, you know. If we could find the source of them, we can eliminate them and press on. No matter what, these guys will continue to search until Brianne is home again. It's worth it if we can find her alive or whatever, you know. That's what it's all about, community getting together and really trying to help each other. In Zenith, Fauna Haile Selassie, News 3. I am running for public office. Kenneth Weezer is not the type of man that does five minute interviews. Now the story deepens and this is even better. At 63 years old, Weezer has worked in his family's carpentry business, started one of his own and has raised a family. Now he says it's time to help others. I feel at this given point with all the knowledge that I have attained in this area and the people that I met, that it's my turn to give back to the 12th district. So for the fifth time, he is running for Congress in the 12th District. I said the first time I ran, I got my foot in the door. Weezer says as a conservative pro-life Democrat, he would try to find compromise in Washington rather than continue the party divide. While he is currently running against two other Democrats and four Republicans, his biggest feat may be giving a clear and concise answer to voters on why he is qualified to be a congressman. What makes me the best? would be the fact that I have traveled more in this district and seen a lot of monuments. Knowing these things, like the Sarnia National Forest and uh, uh, the different names of the, uh, how the names formulated for the counties and stuff like that, I'm concerned about the people. This makes me a better candidate. In a public forum Thursday with nearly all the 12th District congressional candidates, Weezer gave a nearly seven minute introduction instead of the suggested three minute one and hitchhiked from the university down to Dallas, 40 miles one way. Weezer eventually did say he's trying to invest in the 12th district by trying to bring a cancer clinic to the area and a Cracker Barrel to the Lewis and Clark Tower in Hartford, Illinois. There's no success yet, but Weezer says more people should be trying to spur growth in Southern Illinois, and he's hoping to lead the charge as the next 12th district congressman. There are few greater joys than being inside a toy shop. There's some real classic toys like the pound a peg. I guarantee it's fun for all ages. It's a pleasure you won't have behind the flat screen of a computer. There really is nothing like looking at an item in person, seeing it, making sure that it's how it's represented when you see it online. And yet, my favorite toy store owner, Sam Cox, says it consistently loses money to online stores like Amazon.com and eBay because consumers can typically save money by not paying sales tax. When someone buys their Christmas toys on Amazon for $100, they pay $8.25 less than they would if they came here, even if we were at the same price. We're not going to solve this internet sales tax problem state by state. We have to do it nationally. And that's exactly what U.S. Senator Dick Durbin is trying to do with the Marketplace Fairness Act, requiring all online and catalog companies that generate $500,000 or more in sales to pay sales tax based on where the purchaser lives. We can't continue to penalize the shops and businesses on the streets of southern Illinois who are doing the right thing, collecting sales tax, by creating an advantage for those that sell over the internet who aren't collecting the sales tax and are taking away their customers. This is the best store in the whole mall. The Hedgehog Twins here will very much appreciate the new bill that Senator Durbin has introduced. Cox says he understands that for most people these days, the one. a sale really comes down to the price tag. Many people do want to shop local, but it, when, when it comes down to the budget, they sometimes need to go online, so this will be a further encouragement for them to shop at local stores.
Southern Illinois is known for its wine industry, and now more and more people in other states are demanding access to Illinois wines. Local vineyards are taking notice. News 3's Fana Haile Selassie spoke to one winery expanding its business into Kentucky. Fana, this is a big deal for these businesses. Yeah, that's right, Emily, and up until now, wine from Illinois has never been sold in Kentucky due to a law that forbids outside wineries from doing so. But Shawnee Winery found a loophole, and their discovery is getting the attention of other local wineries as well. Well, welcome to Shawnee Winery. Unless you're a local. That's good. Enjoying a glass of your favorite wine from Southern Illinois requires a bit of a drive. Do you all like dries or sweet wines? Despite an ever-growing wine trail in the region and increasing popularity, certain states don't make it easy on small outside vineyards like Shawnee Winery to sell their product. We have a lot of people that came from Kentucky over here to purchase our wines, so we knew the demand was there and we needed to get the product into Kentucky as soon as possible. The only problem? Kentucky law doesn't give liquor licenses to out-of-state companies. So after months of negotiating, Shawnee Winery found a Kentucky middleman, Golden Eagle Distributing. It means very, very big business for us, and we are so thankful for it. Blue Sky is one of the largest vineyards in Southern Illinois, and it too has been looking into distributing companies for a while now. I am delighted to hear that Shawnee, um, you know, has, has, has you know got, gotten through that door. So I mean, it certainly, it certainly will, will, will stir me to you know contact the distributors to see if we can get some action too. Jim Ewers has seen firsthand the growing popularity of Southern Illinois wines. No, thank you and is currently looking at the best way to expand his business within the state and beyond Illinois' borders. They changed the liquor laws in uh, Carbondale, which is great. I mean, it certainly is up to our sales in that area. Um, but I think if we really want to grow, we have to do it on a distributor level as opposed to, you know, just doing more, more local sales. And as long as customers continue to demand their wines, we will go where the demand is at. These guys say they will do their best to provide the wine. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Have a good day. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Kentucky residents can expect to start seeing Shawnee wines in local stores and liquor shops within the next week or two. Now, there is a bit of a balancing act these local vineyards have to play. Of course, they want more sales, but if they sell too much, they become subject to a whole new set of laws. Emily?